Alrighty, y'all. Hello. We are looking at Land Rovers today. Something I really, of course, I know the brand. I've heard of the brand a million times, but I don't really know anything about Land Rover. I was told to look at some Land Rover off-road action uh, when recently I looked at uh, some Audis, and they were basically stock Audi Q7s and even some of their cars, like A6 wagons and things with Quattro going through um, some mud, going up actual off-road environments, steep hills and things. In stock configuration, I was very impressed with what they were doing. I had no idea they were capable of that, and I was told to look at Land Rovers as well. And typically, an off-road scene, which uh, not really currently, but in the past I've very been involved in, you don't typically see a lot of Audis and a lot of Land Rovers on the trails, at least near me. It's always dominated by Jeeps, and if not Jeeps, you know, random trucks like, you know, Ford Raptors, Ford Broncos, you know, Ram trucks, Chevy trucks, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I will be highlighting short clips of really long videos. I'll have these all linked down below so you can watch the whole things and, of course, browser channels. Let's look at some Land Rovers in action. I'm ex pretty excited for this. So first, we have a Land Rover Defender, which that name rings a bell. I'm really intrigued to learn more about these. These are pretty freaking cool. Look at it. Oh my God. That's some thick shit. <laughs> Damn. All right. First things that stand out to me. A, that's a lot harder than it looks. That was really slippery thick stuff it was going through not to mention literally going through brush i don't know what kind of you know engine we're working with here but i do know that uh obviously this one has modified tires the tires look awesome on here but regardless of that i do see solid axles front and rear so that's very impressive and a good indicator that this thing means business in my opinion also uh i do like the body they are kind of like uh the same essence of a jeep what I mean by that is it's very like square and basic looking. And I mean that in a good way. I like that kind of car. I don't need dressed up luxury machines, right? This thing is, it just looks tough and utilitarian. And uh, also the short wheelbase, you know, uh, this thing is going to be pretty solid and, and maneuverable as well. I'm used to off-roading at one time in a huge Ram 2500 uh, power wagon. And that thing was long wide big it was it was ridiculous it was awesome and and very capable but uh fitting it in places was the problem here it is on another super deep ruts and they're wet oh my god look at that thing dude that thing is robust damn okay Wow, that is true mudding right there. That's pretty much what you got to do is keep the momentum going. Keep a constant throttle application. You don't want to floor it either. You don't want to let up and have it stop because then you're going to you're going to start falling backwards. Yeah, I like that thing. I like the look of those, and, and they're clearly capable. Look at it skating through. That is really rough stuff, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> I love the worn winch. Wow. You know, the clatter you can hear in idle. I, I'm almost going to assume this might be a diesel. If it's a diesel, that's really cool to have a short, tough, off-roader like this and have it have a diesel that's freaking awesome so if that's true then i'm a huge fan of this even without a diesel i'd still be a fan but that is really cool uh, this type of thing is just so rare almost like a unicorn here in the u.s man wow and then we have this is i believe filmed in wales this is a land rover this always used to confuse me land rover range rover is that right <laughs> when I was younger, when I first started seeing these in like movies and stuff, I would be like, is it a Range Rover or is it a Land Rover? 
but I think it's a Land Rover Range Rover. <laughs> I would love to see how these do. These are kind of like the G-Wagon type thing here in America. People, and by people, I mean like Hollywood, you know, style, like rich people and, and you know, Instagram girls and stuff love G-Wagons, which is so funny because those things are actually really rugged and capable, but they're always just driven in big parking lots with fancy purses and stuff. <laughs> And these kind of have that same image in, in parts of the U.S. Where, um, you know, those rich t people that never go off-road buy these, like Range Rovers, and have them all dressed up. Uh, so let's see these things actually out in the wild. Okay, this is pretty steep. Remember on camera, everything looks flat. Nothing looks extreme on camera. I've learned that off-roading and filming it. So this looks very steep, which means in real life, it's really, really steep because camera makes it look, everything look goofy. This is, I like that this is stock. Look, at it's even got the stock kind of thinner tires. Is the rear touching? Yeah, the rear's probably gonna touch a little bit, but it shouldn't be a big deal. Then again, I don't mind putting a little, you know, bang around on the cars. <laughs> Some people want a absolute perfect machine. It's like, well, you shouldn't be off-roading then. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty, dude, that went up pretty stress-free. Damn. I mean, look, this thing, even stock, it's got a good ride height. It still sits pretty high. It's got great ground clearance. Even the way it's designed, that uh, approach angle seems pretty solid. The departure angle is pretty good because look at, you don't, the overhang swoops up. So that helps. It's not like it's got a, like a droopy overhang back here, right? Where it's going to start dragging and hooking that on everything and be, you know, just a shitty experience. Um, you, you got clearance, you got a almost, you know, perfect wheelbase. It's not too long where you're going to get caught up on stuff. It's not as short as that Defender, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, this design, actually, I feel like this is, this would be pretty damn capable in stock trim. Uh, the biggest holdback being your tires, because these could, I feel like if you're on some extreme trails, this could puncture quite easily because they are road tires after all. I like to have a little more meat in there, a little more, uh, more sidewall, and of course, you know, theoretically tougher all-terrain tires that uh, have a little bit of a thicker skin, right? I think these are looking pretty damn good out there. More than maybe I would have thought, just because <laughs> I've only seen these in like rich places in downtown Chicago and, you know, Los Angeles and stuff. That's like what you unfortunately think of over here okay he's going to the left a little bit yeah I mean dude that is so steep the fact that this is stock it's not like it's got all these modified high clearance bumpers and huge tires this is showroom stock it looks looks to me and this is not an easy obstacle nah Oh, oh, here we go. Make it work a little bit now. Wow. All right. Hey, I'm impressed. Look at this. Damn. This is pretty cool. I, like, like I said, I believe this is in Wales, according to the title. This is a beautiful area. These huge rolling hills. It's gorgeous, the terrain. We have more Range Rover action. Looks to be just about stock as well. This is in Lithgow, New South Wales, Australia. Australia has incredible uh, off-roading opportunities from what I've seen. And I usually see rigs down there that are way more built up. This is stock. And look at this terrain. Again, this has got to be steep because on camera everything looks flat. This still looks steep, and it looks crazy. Look at all these indents and ruts and cracks and debris. I mean, holy smokes, this is extreme. I would have probably been a little bit nervous to take my 
very modified and very high lifted power wagon on this back in the day. This is a stock Range Rover. I wouldn't even think about it. But here we are on street tires, of all things. Front right's going flat. Yeah, it looks to be, they look to be aired down a little too much. Especially when you're on tires like this, you don't want to air down terribly much. I feel like they'll slip the bead pretty easily. Or puncture. And that's not what you want. Look at the flex. Oh my god. Look at that. Damn. Now, can it power through this? That'd be the mark of a pretty good vehicle versus just a poser, you know? Oh, damn. Yeah, this thing's pretty solid. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. This is one of those, if you know, you know. This uh, this um, uphill is very difficult. Camera can't capture how steep and rough these things are, right? You're in that vehicle going all over the place. Um, it's pretty nerve wracking sometimes. This is really doing well. I can't believe the size of these ruts, man. <laughs> Australia just has some crazy spots. Look at this guy's almost slipping on foot. Be careful. That thing sounds good idling. What what kind of engines are these things working with? It's so nice to see one of these in an environment I think that it's made for. Was that was that a tire screecher? Was that like an animal in the distance? I don't know. Oh, shoot. There it goes. Okay, ride. Yeah, he's got to ride this tire up right here. Ride that tire up slowly. See how it settles. And then going to hit. Going to want to straddle it's it up there. Flat. That tire is way too flat. That's going to puncture. Or slip the bead. Oh, my God, yeah. So that's um, not not really the vehicle's fault, right? I believe they aired down and they aired down too much. They, they did bring one of the buddies up with a beautiful Toyota here and they aired it up. Got a compressor, aired it up. So now let's see what it can do. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. If you don't understand how difficult this is, that is wicked, intimidating terrain there, man. And you're surrounded by land cruisers, no pressure, right? The goat of off-roading, especially in most places. Maybe not so much here in the US, but in most countries, that's your go-to, from what I understand. Look at the size of this drop. Oh my God, that is gonna climb right up. Will it hit? You're right. Is it going to hit, hit the rocker wheel. panel here? That's that's the question. I don't think so. I think it glided right over. Wow. I'm genuinely impressed, seriously. Round of applause. If he can get this to bite, he'll be kind of in the clear yeah. compared Straight. to back there. Yeah. Jesus, that is a ruthless trail, man. Straight. This thing is stock. Right, I'm just not used to seeing a stock vehicle on these tires surrounded by that kind of trail that is not like 
common. That is... That's astonishing, man. Wow. I mean, even look at the tires on this Land Cruiser. And here, here we are in a Range Rover with street tires. And it's freaking hanging with the best of them. Damn. I'm assuming... We know we knew the Defender had solid axles. I can't. I know this definitely has a solid rear axle. I'm not sure about the front. I couldn't tell. It almost looked like maybe it was independent, which that's okay. A lot of newer vehicles with IFS still do spectacularly well, as long as you can keep them strengthened and uh, you know not be snapping parts up front. You're really good to go. Um, the flexing isn't going to be as great, but. Honestly, you should be okay. I'm going to assume this might have some sort of locking differential, at least in the rear. Maybe in the front as well. I'm not sure. But it seemed to be getting some wheel slip and then really gripping and powering through. And, I, and you know, so it seemed to behave like it had some sort of locker somewhere. All right, surprisingly, here's some Land Rover footage in the U.S. This is, I believe, in Utah in the desert. Ooh, ooh, look at that thing bite. Damn. Okay. Thing sounds awesome. This one, of course, in the U.S., it's not a diesel, right? Wow, big surprise. Um, but to be fair, it does sound cool. It's definitely a gasoline engine, and from that rumble, it sounded like a freaking V8. So, I mean, hey, that's a decent compromise. Sounds pretty cool. It's going down a really steep... Uh, uh, down a really steep grade here. Again, this one seems like it's near stock. Maybe very slightly modified. Doesn't have thick tires or anything. Although they're decent. That terrain is just so freaking awesome. And it's handling it quite well. Uh, do you need uh, do you need guidance or? I need fucking counseling. <laughs> You're gonna want to turn left a little bit. One sec. <laughs> Damn, that's a slow. hell of a drop. Slow, slow, yep. Yeah. It'll make it. Just don't fly Ooh. off it. It's gonna scrape. Just a little bit. Good. Ain't nothing gonna hurt that. Damn, look at that. Yup, not as easy as it looks. Let's see how the Bronco does it. <laughs> Just straight down at that. Oh, okay. Oh. Slid on those rock rails that's a little bit. Thought. That's why they're called skid plates. Which they are. They are skids. I think you need to back up and have another go. It's what they're made for, I okay, suppose, right? So it still made it, not as graceful, but uh, well, m maybe we could chalk that up to driver versus driver there. Well, that was thoroughly interesting, and I feel like that probably just breaks the ice. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there is about a million minutes of Land Rover off-road uh, scenarios and, and footage out there. That, of course, we did not feature here. This was very minimal. But, I mean, I think I got the idea that these things are indeed capable. Um, I didn't really doubt that they were. It's just I've never really had experience with them. And I've, it's funny, the only you know time I've really seen them is, ironically, in city environments. <laughs> you know, surrounded by an urban jungle and big parking lots. So that's not a rip on the company. That's just a, a random, you know, American clientele that uh, buy these unfortunately don't seem to be on the trails as much as they are you know at uh, shopping at expensive outlet stores so <laughs> that's just how it is um it's cool to see these in action you know when we saw that Audi video I like I said I was just shocked because I never ever see those off-roading near me and to think that those are again hiding in parking lots and malls and things and they're actually super capable it's kind of a cool thing. It's one of those like, oh, I see you. Like, I didn't know, but I see you, and it's pretty cool. And and now I definitely feel that for Land Rovers as well. I think the Defender doesn't look like a shopping mall car. Like, the Defender looks actually like, yeah, this means business, right?
it looks purpose built just like a jeep wrangler looks like it's made for off-road when you see vehicles that are near stock or bone stock going in some of these trails you know that's that's no joke you can't just take any car and go up these uh it's gonna get damaged and stuck uh, quicker than you can even think so yeah i think it's safe to say i was impressed that was really cool i would love to learn about more of these in depth and of course please share your comments your experiences down below this was a direct suggestion from the comments of the audi video so i do appreciate you guys i appreciate you guys watching uh that's all i got for you in this one hopefully i'll see you in the next one perhaps my name is ian you're watching iw rocker until next time y'all catch you later